Hi, and if you're watching this shortly after I've made it, um, very happy new year 2021. Now, I'm making this video uh, to help you with drawing. It's to help those of you who are looking at this and are possibly wanting to use their time in lockdown creatively and they feel like they want to know more about drawing or return to drawing after doing it at school or maybe drawing for the first time seriously. Um, there's a lot of videos out there that you can find that are really good that tell you how to draw different techniques, shading, how to get volume, thinking about light, different sort of media like pencil, charcoal and so on. Now I might cover those themes in the future um, for you, but what I wanted to say in this video is really um, more about getting rid of those things that are going to stop you from really making progress and, and having fun. They're things about um, feeling blocked, a bit like a writer with a blank page, trying to get started. There are those sort of things that maybe let's talk about and uh, they will open you up and, and make you think about drawing in a clear way so that you, you start on the right path. OK, so that's why I'm offering this video. There will be a, a little PDF to download um, for free. Um, that will cover the main points. So um, let's make a start. OK, so the first thing I want to talk about is um, the urge to draw. Simply that. Um, you may be thinking what I mean by this is uh, your urge to draw and uh, um, the things that you want to draw. You know, we'll get on to that. But what I mean is something slightly different, well actually very different. What I'm talking about is thinking about the urge to draw and how long it's been with us. Now it goes back to prehistory as I'm sure you know there are cave paintings going back um, long before language was invented. Um, we're talking about the caves of Altamira uh, in Spain and Lascaux in France. There are other examples to look up and there you can see the um, quite exquisite mark making that was evident even at that time. So it's a long, long, deeply ingrained urge within us as a species to make marks and explain the world visually. Yeah, I find that very exciting and I urge you to be excited about that urge, that long standing urge. Yeah, it's something that um, is intrinsic to our to our nature and it's worth exploring. So that urge to draw, that momentum that's brought you here and you've clicked on this video, you're connected to that same urge, yeah? It's deeply ingrained in you. Now we can actually start opening up and talk about different motivations and why people draw, yeah? But that urge is very deeply buried within us and leads to different outcomes. Yeah, that's the point I'm trying to make here. I just want you to feel that excitement and that connection because that is really, really important. It's important in a couple of ways. The first is to do with what you're trying to achieve. And the also, also the other connection is your own sense of how good you are and what you're measuring yourself against. And, and like I said at the start, this video is about trying to make sure that you remain open so you can actually do the work and improve, yeah? Um, and discover who you are as an artist, who you are as um, somebody with a pencil or, or whatever implement is in your hand, what that really means as opposed to what you run the risk of actually thinking you need to be to be creative visually yeah now I think that's really important point I wish to get across with this short video so that's point number one understand what the urge to draw means in its broadest sense yeah okay let's go on to point two point two is more about the different types of drawing that exist so be very clear that, that, that some drawings are very finished they stand alone as, as, as great examples of the craft. Um, they are 
so, so powerful because there was nowhere to hide um, far more than with painting or even sculpture or other, other forms. With drawing, there's very, very few little areas that uh, if, if the artist got something wrong, it shows up, yeah? But here's another tripping point. As somebody who is looking towards drawing as, a, as an activity to get into, you may well find that you're looking at work that is going to make you feel, gee, I'm never going to get there. That may or may not be true, um, but you need to understand how those artists got there. And if you understand how they got there and why they got there and the context in which they did it in, you may not actually want to end up getting there anyway, even if you had the actual motor skills to actually work in that way. Yeah, so look broadly, look at what drawing can be in all the different ways. So, you know, an architect's drawings, a sculptor's drawings, a painter's drawings, a printmaker's drawings, they all vary. And then musicians draw. I've seen some very interesting drawings by people like uh, David Byrne, by John Cage, by Brian Eno, where they're actually thinking about music but drawing it out before they compose. Well, they're starting to compose and they're composing visually. Very interesting. You can find that sort of quirky stuff going on too with artists like Paul Clay. And um, there are many other, there are many other sort of things. Like I, I'll list some more down below. All these points I'm making will be listed below and in the free PDF that I'm gonna pull together for you. And that'll point you in the right direction. It'll give you a few different ways to go off in, yeah? So that's the second point. Think about expectation, motivation, and context. I hope this isn't frying your brain. This is meant to be liberating, okay? Um, the third thing is, going back to that point about precision and looking at artwork that is so masterly, so consummate, that you feel intimidated and you end up looking at your page in your sketchbook or a sheet of paper on your drawing board and you don't know where to start. Yeah, well that's not helping anybody. It is so important nevertheless to look at great art and understand it and appreciate it and it's just rewarding in its own right now. But nevertheless don't get hung up on precision because precision can manifest itself in so many different ways. As a case in point, you've got a drawing by Holbein. Just incredible. I love this, this, this portrait, but there are many by him that are equally good. And in this portrait, he hasn't put a foot wrong and he's got the character of the person and is just masterly use of his materials, yeah? But if we look at a head by Frank Auerbach, here he's using charcoal and he's completely revisiting again and again the same feature, the same part of the head, the same volume. He may be erasing it and then restating it. It's a very iterative, very um, additive and then subtractive process. And he's coming and going. I'm not trying to make any comparison between the two. I'm trying to point out to you that both of them are highly regarded draftspeople um, and they're two very valid modes of working. I don't also wish to suggest that these are diametrically opposed on the scale of the opportunities that are out there for you. That's the whole point. There are just two points on the big map of what drawing can be. And that urge you've got to draw you need to keep things open because within you is your own approach to that. It could be towards how Auerbach works. It could be aspirational towards how Hans Holbein works in terms of capturing detail and working in a very careful and incredibly sensitive way. But then again, you've got Degas, you've got Picasso, you've got Clay, you've got Matisse, you've got all these other great um, 
uh, operators of line and tone. Um, I, I could go on. The point I'm trying to make here is that you need to, and for some of you it's going to be a lot harder than others, you need to unlock you. It's not about trying to emulate another artist, learn from them, but you need to do certain exercises which will open up the doors to who you are. You'll, you'll start to find your own voice, yeah? and position yourself within that, that, that very rich territory of what drawing can be, yeah? So, what are some of the practical strategies that you can use to get yourself going, yeah? So, uh, here we go, let's have a look at some, yeah? Okay, so the, um, the first thing to get yourself, I think, is a small sketchbook like this, just an A6 one, yeah? It should be a good quality one, you don't want th paper that's too thin, yeah? You want you want something like that. So so do get an artist one, this is a De La Rowney one, the, the weight of the paper is about 150 gram. You want something that's going to hang, hang together when you when, when you work on it, even, even if you're working just with, with ink as I, as, as I am here. Now this sketchbook goes back to, where was it, Paris in 1999 and I was just going around drawing various sculptures and paintings that I found. I was just studying and I was looking. Um, I spent many a ha happy afternoon in various museums around Paris and I was just using a, a brush and ink to, to, cap to capture these figures and it was my own little personal record. And it's really just about looking. They're not these. Are, these aren't things I would ever exhibit as such. But they're very useful in the studio, just to remind myself what I've seen. Um, yeah, I take photographs as well, of course. But the, these also, quite often, I turn to these for something that photographs just can't give. Yeah, and uh, they're just they're just they're just great. I tell you. 99 doesn't seem all that long ago it is and it's, it's a little bit of time travel to go back to these things what we got here this is another little sketchbook a similar sort of thing this was munich when i was i, I traveled there for the eclipse it was 99 and again a similar sort of thing just working through the great thing about sketchbooks is you end up writing in them as well and you get all your ideas around and of course drawings are just visual ideas yeah mix it up do not, do not get hung up about what you're putting in here. They're private. Okay, I'm showing them with you now, but but you get the point. These are these are things for you. They're not they're not to show off. Yeah, they're they're for you to work out who you are and make notes. Whether it's whether it's a, just to understand a painting better, or whether it's you know lines and things that you need to go back to, or notes on an artist, or or maybe just a note you've got in a restaurant afterwards when you're relaxing and thinking about things and you just write a few lines maybe even it, 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 it's a prose poem or something but you know you're, you're mulling around ideas they're private and you keep them going and then larger sketchbooks this is this is much more recent these are sort of little studies towards paintings yeah but you can see when I'm working chromatically they they are and linear linearly there's still a connection there to the sort of little drawings I was doing earlier yeah these are just uh, I suppose larger series of ideas so get yourself a sketchbook get yourself at least one sketchbook and the best best sketchbook tip I can give you is do not do not open up and write your name in the front like this I, I mean okay you can do this on this page write your name in and, and contact details like I did and even offer a little little um, reward if you lose it and say I'll give you 20 euros or whatever you've returned it to post it to this address but the point I'm trying to make is do not kick your, your sketchbook off and then try and work through it page by page yeah just 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 work 
so you, so you don't feel that obligation to try and make it like you're filling a book from, from A to Z. Yeah? Just be free. Okay, so sketchbooks, great. But do not, do not freeze up and buy such a fancy sketchbook that you fetishize it and you, and, and, and you feel you can only do a good drawing in it. Yeah? It's not the point you need to make mistakes. And the best way to make mistakes is the second method, which is just piles of paper. Now you can afford to work with less um, expensive paper. Obviously don't go and buy top end paper when you're starting out, but do get a good cartridge paper. I've got a pile around here. I've got various sized cartridge papers and you can just get good quality A4. And here, the exercise is volume. It's all about volume of drawing. Again, I don't want you to um, get hung up about making drawings that you would feel comfortable showing people. The whole idea is to get your motor skills going and draw, yeah? Sounds simple, doesn't it? And I know it's not. But what I'm really, really keen to do is make sure you don't pussyfoot around, to put it bluntly. Do not pussyfoot, yeah? You've got to dive in and make mistakes or be bold. You can always rein it in later but if you've constantly got your slippers on and, and tiptoeing around with your materials you're not going to get there. That will come later. Okay. Thirdly, choose your materials wisely. Now I, 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 I'm cautious about being too prescriptive here but um, watch out with pencils. They're lovely when they're used well, but a sharpened pencil on a blank piece of paper quite often is it's, it's limiting before you even start, yeah? Depending on how you use it. What I'd suggest when you're starting out is either something a bit a bit softer. Now this 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 is uh, you may have seen these on, on various channels. Yeah. It's basically just a holder for various coloured chalks. That's got a white one in, but you get the idea. They're great for just making a nice, nice, more open line, yeah? Or use a softer graphite pencil or charcoal or Conte crayon or something. But try and avoid hard pencils with points, yeah? Because then you're suddenly making this mark and it's going to slow you down. In most cases, there's always going to be exceptions. Somebody's going to say, hey, Robert, I really disagree with you here because I, I, you know, the pencil is the thing for me and I love that, that sharp point and blah, blah, blah. Great. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying watch out for it. Okay. The whole idea is to get those motor skills going and for you to feel the mark through the arm. It's very hard to do it if you're kind of zooming in and, and starting to shade and do all sorts of fiddly little things. Yeah. So another good thing in that regard is where's it gone? I'm back. Another good thing is one of these, uh, Uniball um, is, a, is a make or similar and they give you quite a nice even, very point, good point here, even black line and they're great for just getting, getting across the page quickly and you can make all sorts of nice marks whether they are, you want to go singly and make this very refined contour or you can do is loads of hatching with it and everything. And also another reason why I mentioned make sure in your sketchbooks the paper is at least 150 gram GSM rather, is then with a wet brush, you can quite often just tackle that line with a little bit of water and you get all sorts of nice tonal effects as well, yeah? So I think that's, I'm gonna draw a line under it for today. I just wanna recap quickly what we've spoken about. So just to recap, First of all, you've got the urge to draw. Remember that that means you're connecting to a, an exceptionally long tradition that is very exciting to engage with. And I encourage you to look very broadly across a lot of different cultures as to what that tradition has delivered and why, yeah? So it's a lifetime study really, but hey, what the hell. Um, Secondly, think about expectations. Why are you even doing it in the first place? 
don't get bogged down by it, but it's a very important question to ask at some point when you're comfortable. You need to spend some time thinking about what your expectations are. What is it you want to get out of it? Are you trying to produce drawings because you want to dinner, show them, maybe in an open call to a drawing exhibition, like the, um, what's called now, Trinity Boy Wharf Drawing Prize, for example. There are others. Is that the sort of graphic artist you wish to be? Do you want to produce finished drawings and show them in that sort of space? Are you drawing because you want to make a painting and you don't want to commit to paint until you've got the composition sorted out? Great, yeah? It needs a slightly different approach. Now, you may want to do both, and that's fine too, yeah? Now, if you're an architect or if you're a sculptor or so on, those drawing disciplines are a whole different bag of skills there, um, and you're probably already on the way to doing it. But, um, yeah, just, just work out what are your expectations. And then um, don't forget that precision and truth, Matisse famously said exactitude is not truth, are different things to different people. So don't get hung up on those exceptionally powerful masterly drawings that exist out there because your temperament, your sensibility and everything may be pointing, pulling you away towards something else, yeah? But overlaying that is your fascination and justified awe in these incredible graphic works, which you should spend time with because they are rewarding, immensely rewarding to, to study. So I hope I'm not coming across as giving conflicting information there. For God's sake, go off and look at these works, but don't get hung up by them. You've got something ticking inside of you that I want you to get to, and that means spending time with yourself, not overlaying it with what somebody else has achieved on their terms, yeah? Shut up, Robert. I think you've said enough. Um, I'll put some links in the description box below. If this video has helped you in some way, some small way, then please like it because it helps me grow the channel. Um, if it's helped you in a slightly bigger way than that, consider subscribing down here. And um, don't forget that I'm going to produce some kind of little PDF which kind of reiterates the points I've made here. And that really is time out for this. Enjoy your drawing. That's what it's all about. Enjoyment and enrichment. Yeah. So go off and do some. Turn the computer off. OK. See you another time.